Hello, welcome to the Longhouse. My name's Olga and I'm having a lovely quiet minute to myself here. Uh, the children are all outside playing in the sun and all the men folk have gone out fishing to get something for tea tonight. So it's a good time to catch up on a wee bit of sewing and a few wee jobs and then have a nice rest. But maybe you would like me to tell you a wee bit about the Vikings and Bangor and how we came here. And it goes back a long time now. The story goes right back to about the year 800. And at that time, the Vikings, our ancestors, were all going around the world. They were sailing to different countries and they were involved in raids. And you'll hear all sorts of stories about them. Some of them are true. Uh, there's the odd one that maybe is a bit exaggerated. But when it comes to Ireland, I can tell you a wee bit about how they ended up in Bangor. And what happened was, uh, way back in 800, there were, were some raids down through the islands of Scotland and they made their way over and the first place they arrived off the coast of Ireland was Rathlin Island. And I'm sure you've heard of Rathlin Island, it's just off Valley Castle. And it's not a very big place, not a very grand place, but that's the first place that they actually brought the boats in and went to land. And actually there's still a graveyard there. And if you go to Rathlin Island today and ask, you can be shown where the graveyard of the Vikings is. But after that, they made their way down the coast. And uh, it took to about um, 8.23 before they actually reached Bangor. And Bangor at that time, of course, didn't look like it is today. It's nothing like it. At that time, there was just a huge big monastery. And I'm sure you know what a monastery looks like. It's a place where there's lots of buildings stretched out over a big wide area and there are lots of monks and you think I'm dressed funny, you want to see them. Uh, but they all work and live in the monastery and they learned about God and they sang a lot and um, they did a lot of other strenuous labour as well. And that's where the first Vikings attacked and they made an attack there and the reason they had come all this way from probably Norway was that they were looking to steal things like gold and silver and precious stones and make themselves rich because the word Viking, now I don't know if you know this, but the word Viking is a nickname that was given to us, to them, and it actually means a pirate someone who goes out in their ships and they take what doesn't belong to them and kill if they have to and uh, they go back home a lot richer than when they started out and that's exactly what they were doing so they were raiding and they were looking to get rich as, as possible now here in Bangor they raided once and it's usually about this time of year because the weather's better seas are calm and they can get back home quickly as well um, but they want to be home before winter because the big seas are not a place to be, even if you're a brilliant sailor like the Viking men are. And then they came back the following springtime and they did the same thing again, except this time the monks put up a bit of a fight and they weren't going to let them just come and take what they wanted. And they had killed so many of the monks. It was terrible. There were about 900 of them killed. And that was recorded in the diaries of the monks. And that's why the Vikings got such a bad name at that time. It's really bad. Um, but they had not so much gold and silver here as they would have in England or in France. And they'd been around all of these countries. And um, so they had to do something else to make it worth their while. They took what they could, but they also took people. And they were going to use them as slaves. Now, they wouldn't keep them all. They would only keep out, pick out the best ones, the big, strong boys and girls, because there were a lot of them about here in Bangor. And um, they were going to take them and keep them. And then they were going to sell the rest of them. So they packed the boats with them, as many as they could. And they took them back to Norway. And then they took them to the slave markets and sold them. And that's how they made their money. 
and they, they created a big trade in Ireland uh, with the slave trade. And they moved on down to Dublin and Waterford and Wexford and places like that, and that's how they started trading. And as time went on, you know, they didn't want to kill, they didn't want to raid and do all those things that gave them such a bad name. And they ended up uh, staying over winter, getting involved in life here. Some of them married the Irish girls who apparently liked them because, well, for one thing, they were exciting and they were much richer than the Irish men. Didn't smell so bad because they bathed more often. And so they became part of life here and they had families here as well and began to trade instead of raid, which was much more peaceful and acceptable to the people who lived here. So that's how my ancestors came to be in Bangor. Now they travelled on down and, and created other towns, as I've said, but because we're in Bangor today, I think it's good that you know a wee bit about them. And if you hear people saying terrible bad things about them, you know, some of them are true, but they did other things that were very good as well. And I want you just to have a wee look now and see around my house. And I could start off over at my loom. No, I actually such a nice day. I should really take the loom outside, but I haven't much time, so I'll, I'll just stick inside today. But as you can see here, I've started making a piece of material and I'll probably turn this into a, a garment for one of the children or maybe two of them if there's enough. But sometimes I have to do a sail for the ship on this, which is a big job and it takes a long time. And this is all from wool from the sheep, of course. So we have to keep plenty of sheep around to keep on uh, being able to use the loom. But I think I'll take a rest today. I think that's enough for today. The other job I have to do before the men get back is light the fire. So the slaves should have had this done this morning, but I think they've gone fishing as well. Sometimes they're allowed to do that as long as they do all the heavy work. So we'll get the fire lit and then hopefully we'll have nice fresh fish for tea tonight. There's nothing else in the pot, so here's hoping they're lucky with their fishing. And as you can see, they've left all their helmets behind, so no fighting today. And obviously their, their uh, armour's on the walls as well, so they're out enjoying themselves today. It's a day off. Uh, the skins here are all good for trading as well. These are things that you can trade whenever you go on your trading trips. In Ballyhome Beach, there is a burial, and it was discovered just over 100 years ago. And Ballyhome Beach was a great place to pull a ship up onto the sand because it's shallow, it's nice and flat, and that's exactly what happened. Uh, but unfortunately, the person in the ship had died and was buried in Ballyhome Beach, and that grave was just discovered in uh, 1903. And in the grave, they found three items. Two of them were like these, almost identical to these. They're called oval brooches. They're made of bronze. And as you can see, they would have been worn by a woman to hold up her garment and hang her lovely beads from. And they were found in the grave along with a bowl. And with the bowl, there was a bit of chain like this. And that chain would have been used to hang the bowl from the roof and put a candle in it. Because you can see Viking houses are pretty dark because they don't have any windows. Now we have to have a window here today because it would be too dark, but there wouldn't have even been a window in it. And so you have your bowl hanging from the roof with a candle and that's a lamp. And that's what was found in the grave. So we know it was a woman's grave. And we actually have a copy here in the museum in Bangor of the brooches that were found. Very similar to this with a beautiful pattern on them. And sometimes they were called tortoise shell brooches because that's kind of what they look like. So that's an exciting connection to have with the Vikings all that time ago. And we think the woman was a trader and we don't know how she died, but uh, she was buried in the boat that she was using and they can study the grave and find out all these things. Archaeologists are very clever at doing that now and tell you lots about the person who was buried. So Ballyhome Beach is a very important connection for you people in Bangor. 
Well, I think that I've probably talked to you long enough, but you feel free to wander about and come back and ask questions and find out more for yourself. So have a good day. Bye.